friends, it is time for another monthly budget and net worth recap. And first I have a question for you guys before we get into it. These videos, I know I've been doing them for seven, almost eight years now, are a really great sneak peek into a real life budget. I love being transparent about my money on the internet, but lately these videos haven't been getting much views or traction and it's hurting my channel a little bit. So I need some feedback from y'all. Are you still interested in these? I don't know whether it's because I'm making more money now or you're just not as interested in the uh, additional things like the ag wagon rental or business expenses, but I'm not getting as many views. So I'm considering putting these type of videos behind a membership paywall. So if you are interested in my monthly budget and net worth report videos, would you pay for them behind a paywall or would you rather me just get rid of them entirely? I would like to do videos that help my channel grow. And that's a big part of what's Kind of happening right now is I'm trying to filter out some of the older content that maybe there's just a very vocal minority that likes it. So please give me feedback down below. And now we'll get into April's budget. Also, if you don't know me, I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I've been posting my budget on the internet for eight years. <laughs> uh, so let's look at it. So first off, I made $3,202 for my day job at Texas A&M, I made $2,949 from Budget Girl, and my boyfriend paid me $700 for his half of our household expenses. You can see how we figured out how that would work in a house that I own where he rents and has a lease in the video on why I charge my boyfriend rent to live in my house, which I'll have linked down below and I'll also put it here, Sahil, please. And I made uh, $1,250 from my long-term rental tenant because I live in the duplex that I own, I ran out one side. So that's a total of $8,102 in income for the month. And over here, just some notes, I paid a little over four grand to the IRS for taxes from last year when I filed and also for my quarterly estimated taxes for my budget roll business. So that was a lot. And then I also spent $2,000 for a deposit for a new irrigation job in my backyard. If uh, you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been dealing with issues with drainage in the backyard since I bought the house. And I've already had, I've already put in a French drain. I already had it regraded. It hasn't been good enough. The house is flooded once and it keeps trying to flood. So we're trying to do an even harder irrigation project that will funnel the water where it needs to go, which is away from my house. So that's gonna be about five grand total. Um, so I had to put in the deposit for that. Also, I paid an extra mortgage payment and that got applied this month. So that was an extra $1,600. Going just down the line here, I uh, didn't do too bad on personal spending this month. I spent $175 eating out, $384 on groceries, $311 on personal stuff, which was, looks like a, a huge portion of that was just going to get a massage and uh, spending some stuff at the local pallet picker's place. <laughs> 90 bucks on gas, about $50 on some gifts and giving, 70 bucks on clothes, and $300 for um, just some miscellaneous spending, which involved a, um, a copay, a prescription, and um, Stella, my new, my new puppy, getting her shots, and also some dog setting for my oldest dog, Rory. So all in, I also have some basic subscriptions. So I pay for Hulu and Disney. One of my best friends pays for Netflix and Amazon and we share passwords on that. Hopefully that won't go away anytime soon. I also pay $11 a month for a Kindle Unlimited subscription, which I use constantly. So my total expenses for the month were just a little bit over $3,000 and that includes my $1,600 mortgage. So that is technically paid for by my tenants. It's still something I'm responsible for every month. So it's in my monthly budget. Next, I sent $500 to my future real estate investment property savings and I spent uh, invested $700, 500 in a Roth IRA and 200 in a brokerage fund. So my total spending for the month was $4,316.97, which was actually about $350 under what was budgeted, which is good. Next, my budget girl business. Thank you for watching, by the way. I made $628 on YouTube. $97 on AdSense for my website, budgetgirl.com, which is full of free and amazing stuff for you. So go check it out. I made $223.47 on Etsy, which is where you can get this budget, by the way. You can get my budget and my net worth tracky, oh, tracker over on my Etsy shop. They are less than $10 and it's what I have used to get out of debt and build wealth. And thousands of other people have too. So go check it out. And it's reusable and customizable every single month forever. I think you're gonna love it. You don't have to use my budget, but I do want you to use a budget. So take that as 
encouragement to figure out a budget for yourself because it is the secret sauce to building wealth. Next, I made $2,000 from a couple of integrations with Skillshare. You probably saw them a couple of months ago. And then my total income for BG was just under three grand. Next, I had just over $1,200 in expenses for Budget Girl. That includes a couple of subscriptions, a couple of independent contractors that do things like my newsletter, my website, my video editor, etc. So all of that goes through. Oh, I um, had to send a, a winning prize from an Instagram contest I ran to a person. And I also, and this is kind of interesting, it's kind of a lark, but I paid $150 for a color consultation from someone I found on Instagram. Her name's Created Colorful on there. And I think it's really cool. I, I've always seen those articles and my grandma was actually kind of into this, you know, the spring, summer, fall, winter, and you dress in a certain palette of colors that makes you look the best. I put my face on the internet all the time and I think it would probably actually save me money and clothes if I figured out what colors looked the best on me and that made me like do really well. I know that like deep blues and jewel tones look good on me but this is going to be like a full consultation of what I should wear, what kind of like colors I should pick for like my lipstick and makeup and clothes and I'm really excited about it. It was 150 bucks and I can write that off as a business expense because you guys have to look at me so maybe that will be <laughs> good for y'all too if I dress better <laughs> or in colors that are more attractive. So I'm excited about that. Very very excited. Not sponsored. Obviously I paid for it. Next my <laughs> duplex expenses. Um, so I had $1,740 come in in rent. I um, paid $1,600 to the mortgage and it's not on here, but I paid an extra $1,600 to the mortgage this month. Back when I refinanced in October or November of last year, essentially they skip a month. Um, the refi didn't cost anything, but they you skip a month when you refi before you start paying on it again. And that month gets kind of absorbed into your total debt and I didn't I still had income coming in that month so I didn't want an additional $1,600 owed so I went ahead and paid it as soon as they let me they sold they've already sold the loan once so I couldn't pay it to the first place had to pay it to the second also put it off for a minute and tried to put it in the wrong place in the website but it's there so you'll see that my mortgage went down a little extra this month in my net worth section which is coming up I also paid $75 to a new person to do the yard and clear out the gutters and then I paid a hundred dollar deposit for the new irrigation guy to come out and give a consultation and then the two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars as a deposit for his work and hopefully that's happening next week and I don't have to worry about my house flooding every time it rains that would be great all right so that was a total of four thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars in house expenses but I moved the twenty seven fifty from my emergency fund my duplex emergency fund for this and then I just took a hundred seventy five from my regular budget next my Airbnb income so I had one two three four five six seven guests this month who paid a total of $1,036 to stay at the Ag Wagon, my vacation rental. I'll link all the stuff on that down below. I My whole reno series on that is coming out now. People aren't watching it. So go, go check out that video if you want to help. It's very amusing to uh, watch me get my ass kicked by a trailer. And that is what happens. <laughs> All right, um, then I spent $30 on a new quilt set. One of the guests ripped a pillow cover a little bit. I was actually able to repair it, but I went ahead and bought an additional quilt set for the bed just to have in reserve. I have three, or now four, um, full bedding sets just in case anything happens. I also don't want them to like discontinue that set and we have to find a new one. I also spent $25.95 on some stickers for the Ag Wagon because we got the logo in. It's super cute. You can check it out at the Ag Wagon's social media at the Ag Wagon. And you can actually vote on which one you like best if you would like. Next, I paid $478.64 in lot rent. So um, this is actually our second to last month in the park that we are currently in. They would only let us stay for six months due to the age of the camper. And I also think they're pretty booked up for the summer and fall. But I did find a new place to put us. <laughs> Not everyone wants to Except Airbnb properties, but I found a really nice place and I'm really excited for it to go there. And it has a pool, which extra amenity. It's only 15 extra dollars a month too. All right. And then I was going to make money this month on the camper, y'all. It was going to happen. Um, and then there was an issue, <laughs> which is adequately named poop, poopocalypse. Poop, poopocalypse. Um, so what happened was 
after a guest checked out, my cleaner went in and she said she couldn't get the toilet to drain. She cleaned it. The way that we had it working was we kept the black tank, which is what holds the sewage, open to drain down to the park sewage center, which is a no-no in Camperland, but my RV guy assured me that it would be fine. We should just fill up the toilet a few times with water after every guest to kind of flush everything through. Now, either that was really, really bad, or there was a bunch of kind of dried and desiccated, there was a poop mountain in there and it had dried up and hardened and become like concrete is the what the RV repair guy said. And so they tried to like push water through it to push all the stuff out. We put down chemicals um, and it was almost a situation where we had to replace the black tank, which would have been horrible. Fortunately, the chemicals worked after sitting them for a couple of days. I did have to actually cancel a guest who was coming for one night because of the situation. I wasn't sure the toilet was going to be fixed and it cost $860 over the course of a week to get this fixed. Fortunately, the chemicals, we used a product called Command RV Septic Cleaner and it was able to break down stuff enough that we could flush that old sewage waste out and essentially get the black tank all cleaned out and now we're gonna keep it closed and just empty it like once a week or after each guest. But either way, there was there was a whole stinky situation and it was very expensive to fix. I hope it doesn't happen again. I'm also not sure exactly what caused it, whether it was old poop or new poop, but there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, just part of the part of the deal, I guess, when you're dealing with a really old camper, you don't. Uh, you can't really get in to the black tank without taking it out to see kind of what the situation is down there. And it was fine for four months. <laughs> so um, yeah, it might have been old that got loose and then floated up and clogged everything or it might have been new. We don't know. Uh, so we have new systems now. Everything's been cleared out. There's no more stinky and it was great. I'm really glad it didn't happen while a guest was there. I'm so glad. And yeah, it could have been worse could have been worse, but that means I don't make any profit this month. <laughs> in fact, that the cleaning fees were $243 and that the guest pays that. The guest pays the $45 cleaning fee that my cleaning person charges. She's amazing. I'm not willing to clean it because often turnovers happen in the middle of the day and I'm at work. I'm here. Also, I'm not a professional cleaner and I would like this to be eventually a semi-passive stream of income and I don't particularly like cleaning it. I mean, it's not, it's a 200 square foot fit space. It's not bad, but I'm trying to set up systems so that I don't have to be going after work and cleaning the camper and doing all the laundry and everything. Plus I get to employ a small business here that's female owned in the Brazos Valley. Um, so I, I love Anissa, she's fantastic. And I want to keep being able to pay her to do this. And then the final expense was $40 to replace some of the propane. The stove and the water heater run off of propane and we just ran out. All right, so total expenses for the ag wagon were $1,678 and as you can see the income was just over $1,000 so negative $641 for the month. <laughs> Y'all I'm just hoping like we haven't had a net positive month yet but it's coming. It's coming. This is a this is a business and sometimes businesses take a while to get off the ground and running. We've got great reviews. Um, it's a great place and I just I, I hope we'll turn the tide soon. So um, that is all of my income and expenses. So my total income was 8K minus 4K expenses minus $1,200 budget girl expenses. I only took the 175 out of here for property because the rest came from the emergency fund minus the Airbnb loss and uh, not minus the Airbnb fund loss, but equals $2,320. So from that, we took the Airbnb loss and we topped back off the duplex emergency fund to bring it back up to 10K. And then I had $954 that I could send to my real estate investment fund. So um, ending amount is zero, which is what we want. This is zero based budget. Let's go to my net worth tracker. So $4,000 in checking. Um, in my regular checking, $2,000 in my duplex checking. Um, once again, there were just some expenses that came out of there. So it's a little lower than last month equals 7K in cash. Next, $10,000 in my regular emergency fund, $10,000 in my duplex emergency fund. That was down to nine something and then we topped it back off and it was 12K 
last month. So we're just, we're gonna go back to 10K and that'll be fine. <laughs> and then $2,000 in short-term savings. Next, my sinking funds, 11,005 in my real estate investment savings fund, uh, 2K in my YouTube savings, $300 in my car insurance savings, equals out to $43,677 in cash and savings. Next, I have 18, Four in my Texas A&M Teachers Retirement System account, $9,000 in an old IRA, and $2,000 in another Roth, old Roth IRA, and then $18,000 or $18,800 in the Roth IRA that I actively contribute to, equaling out to $48,700 for retirement savings, which is down just a scooch. Next, my other investments, 2K in M1 Finance brokerage account, and then about $300, actually about $250 each in a couple of other little brokerages. Total investments are 51.1, and that's a total liquid assets of $94,780. Next up, my property assets. So my duplex is worth about 300 grand, my car is worth about five, the ag wagon's worth about 20, and my new camper, which I haven't actually done anything yet with, is worth about eight. So that's $333,000 in property assets. And then we move on to my only debt, which is my mortgage. And as you can see, that has gone down a little bit, actually $2,065 since last month. And that's really just getting it back down to where it should have been um, because at the end of last year, it looked like the debt went up a little bit and I don't want that. I put that much to the mortgage and it went down a little bit extra normally it goes down about 460 dollars a month because a lot of that is interest and taxes and insurance and all of that jazz <laughs> so my net worth for the month is 205,627 dollars which is down $4,500 from last month but that is primarily due to the additional payment the um almost $3,000 deposit for the irrigation work and the $4,000 plus dollar tax payment. So we're down a little bit, but we're still here. We're still working and hopefully we'll go back up again a little bit next month. I would love to know how your April went. How do you budget? It does your, do you track your net worth? Cause that's really, really fun. Um, last month I had a loss for the month, but a net gain for my overall net worth. And this month seems to be the opposite. I had a positive for a month and a big old loss in the net worth, but it's fine. I do the net worth tracking because it's a macro view. It's a bird's eye view of your finances. And you can really see trends going along over time and just your overall financial health score. And I think I'm doing pretty good. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know down below if you would like me to continue doing these videos if there's a change or an idea you have for me to make these better or if you'd be willing to watch them behind a paywall as is i will see you next time and don't forget to subscribe